Thank you for purchasing the Banks Derringer for the L5P. In this video, we'll be installing the Derringer with iDash 1.8. Before we get started, let's introduce you to the new Derringer Gen 2 module. The Derringer Gen 2 is everything you loved about the original Derringer tuner in a new module housing. Calibration and performance remains unchanged to the original Derringer. An installation of both units is identical. Now let's take a look at the components of your new Banks Derringer system. If you purchase the Derringer with a switch, you'll be using the gray termination cap. If you have an iDash, you'll be using the black termination cap. Think of the termination cap and the termination jumper in the back of the iDash as the fingers and the toes of your system. The termination cap and the termination jumper both have electronics inside that lets the system know where the circuit ends. Failure to install the termination cap or the termination jumper could result in odd behavior. When working with electronics in your car, it's always a good idea to disconnect the battery. And in the case of the L5P, we have two batteries. We recommend disconnecting the negative terminal on both batteries. Your new Rev-C harness only needs to be connected at two places on top of the engine. First is the T-MAP, that's the Temperature Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor, and the FRP sensor, the Fuel Rail Pressure. Let's do the T-MAP sensor first. Find the sensor, and as seen here, carefully slide back the gray locking clip on the top of the connector. It only slides out about an eighth of an inch. Having slid the lock back slightly, you can now use your thumb and forefinger to pinch the clip and pull the plug away. Don't tug on the wires, just the clip itself. And sometimes it takes just a little bit of wiggling. And now let's locate the FRP sensor and repeat the process. Now take the Derringer harness and find the cable that's marked MAP and let's connect it to the MAP sensor leads you've just disconnected. And let's repeat the process for the FRP sensor leads. Be sure to slide the locking pins back in on both plugs. And now it's time to get out some zip ties and tie everything up securely. After securely zip tying the connectors down, route the harness across the top of the engine so as to not interfere with any moving components and head towards the battery, ultimately reaching the cross member just above the battery. Now it's time to connect the Derringer module itself to the harness. And now it's time to attach the termination cap to the Derringer. Again, if you're using the switch kit, you'll be using the gray termination cap. If you're using an iDash, you'll use the black termination cap. Now let's attach the starter cable to the other side of the Derringer. Be sure not to just jam the cable into the Derringer. These are gold plated pins and we don't want you to bend them. Notice there's a small locating tab on the inside of the Derringer and the same for the termination cap and the starter cable. They'll only fit together one way and once you find it, it'll slide nicely together and you can turn the locking mechanism to latch them together. The next step is routing your starter cable into the cab of the truck. Now there are two methods you can choose from to do this. The first method is by snaking the cable through a grommet in the bulkhead into the cab. The second method involves routing the cable through the fender and into the dash by going through a small grommet in the door jam. We advise watching the entire video before you decide which method you prefer. First, we'll start with the traditional method of snaking the starter cable through the grommet in the firewall. Time to take the starter cable and snake it through the giant grommet into the cab of the truck. Now this can be done alone, but it helps to have a friend to be on the inside of the vehicle feeling around as you push it through, they can pull. 
And there's two ways to get through the grommet. You can either slice a hole in the grommet itself and use a coat hanger or some other snake tool, or as Matt, our installer, is doing here, you can push the grommet down and actually go around the grommet itself. Now go into the cabin of the truck and locate the plastic housing just above the driver's left foot. You'll find one clip on the left side and two clips on the right side. After dislodging these clips, the black cover will come out towards you and then drop down. Now with some fishing around with your fingers, you'll be able to locate the starter cable that you just pushed through the grommet. Carefully pull the cable through. If you have a friend to help you, they can feed from the other side. It makes it a little easier. Now let's take a look at the alternate method of routing the starter cable through the fender and into the door jam. We've chosen to call this the alternate method because when you go through the door jam, it does leave the cable slightly exposed to the elements. Whereas the first method, going through the grommet and the firewall, the cable is very well protected from the elements. However, this method is quite a bit easier. So let's proceed. Choose the hole in the fender well furthest from the hood hinge. You don't want it to get pinched. Route it back towards the driver's door. Find the one inch tall round grommet in the door jam, poke a hole in it, and route your cable through that grommet. You'll be able to reach up behind your dash, feel the cable, and pull it through. Now let's jump back into the engine bay and make sure that we have enough slack for the Derringer to be properly mounted on the cross member. Position the Derringer on the cross member so the LED is facing towards the front of the vehicle. This way you can see it when the hood's open. Then let's zip tie it very securely. You'll notice there are a couple small openings on the Derringer. This allows you to pass a zip tie right through it for secure mounting. Now let's take one final pass looking at the harness to make sure it doesn't infringe on any moving component and that it's out of the way of the battery tray and other things that you might want to move later. Now let's move back inside the truck and remove the side of the dash. This panel normally hides your fuse block. It's held on just by clips, so go ahead and carefully pry it away. Now let's route the starter cable up and over the emergency brake, and then snake it up the side of the dash and towards the pillar, or wherever you're going to mount the I-dash. Now let's plug in the OBD cable and follow the same cable routing path. Now hold the OBD cable and the starter cable together, zip tie them as one, and then take the extra cable, loop it up, zip tie it, and keep it stored in the side panel. If you've purchased the Derringer kit with I-Dash and a pillar mount, it's time to remove the stock pillar. Do so by removing the two plastic covers above the 10 millimeter bolts. You can use a screwdriver or a plastic pry tool to do so. Be careful, you don't want to leave a permanent mark in the plastic pillar in case you want to put it back. Once you've removed the bolts, pull the pillar back towards the steering wheel and then up. Find the white nut cert. It's small and plastic, don't lose or break it. Locate the elongated slot at the top of the pillar and insert the plastic nut into the center of the slot. Slide the wires through the gauge hole, leaving about four inches exposed. Then push the pillar down into the dash and using your thumb, pull the weather stripping out and around the pillar. This will hold it in as you prepare to put the screw in. The next step is a pretty simple task, but it might take you a moment. Using the screw, locate the nut cert you've put in the pillar. When you've started it with your fingers, use a screwdriver and snug it up against the pillar. But don't over tighten, the nut is plastic and can break if you get crazy. Now it's time to connect and insert the I-Dash. First, be sure that the termination plug is in the I-Dash. You'll see Matt pointing to it here. If you have multiple I-Dashes, there should only be one termination plug in the very last I-Dash in the chain. If you have two I-Dashes, it should be on the secondary. If you have three I-Dashes, the termination plug should only be found in the third I-Dash. 
Make sure you've removed the two white plastic nuts from the back of the iDash and the black plastic spacer. You will not need these. Connect the wires and carefully slip it into the pillar. There should be enough pressure on the iDash to hold it firmly in place. If you chose the method and you went through the firewall, now it's time to replace the black plastic covering in the footwell. Then we'll return to the engine bay and reconnect the batteries. For a full tutorial on all the iDash's amazing functionality, we recommend you hit bankspower.com slash iDash. Now get on the road and enjoy your Derringer.